Hey all, this week I'm launching a new mini series where we're gonna get to know some boats together and broaden our education. Let me know what you think in the comments. On this week's episode, everything you need to know about Beneteau. A lot of people, especially in North America, view Beneteau as sort of a newer brand that started showing up in the 90s. But the company was actually founded in France in 1884 by Benjamin Beneteau because, of course, who else? Benjamin Beneteau was an advocate of steam power boats in the early 1900s and tried to convince fishermen to use them, but they refused because at the time, steam power boats were widely thought to be unreliable. To prove his point, Benjamin Beneteau went out on one himself. In 1912, Beneteau Boat Works built its first sailboat. Unfortunately, Benjamin Beneteau actually died in 1928 at the age of 68. But in the mid-1960s, his grandchildren, Annette and Andre, started the company down the path of building fiberglass boats. Beneteau doesn't just make boats at its facilities in France and some other places in Europe, they also have a production facility in South Carolina. The Beneteau Group, as it's now known, actually makes power boats and sailboats and, believe it or not, leisure homes, or trailers, in France. The group owns a lot of different brands now, that some of which you may know, like Genoe, Lagoon Catamarans, Four Winds, yep, Four Winds, Prestige, Wellcraft, Delphia, and Excess, and they employ over 8,300 people. Beneteau actually started filling a niche in the market of cruising boats aimed at luxury and a comfortable, roomy environment with beamy boats offering lots of interior space and storage and a high freeboard offering a lot more standing headroom. Beneteau is of course most well known around here for its sailboats and they have a wide range depending on what you're looking for. Most commonly found cruising around are the Oceanus fleet of models aimed at the general needs of long-term cruising and liveaboards looking for a comfortable experience and relative luxury, employing new technology like electric winches and in-mast furling systems. But if speed is more your thing, and it's definitely my thing, Beneteau makes a line of boats called the First Series. Beneteau First, definitely where I land on the entire Beneteau line. The First Series largely shares hulls with the Oceanus series, but typically employing higher aspect keels, taller rigs, and a more racer-cruiser sort of a boat. The first series is typically just as comfortable and accommodating as the Oceana series, but faster. And we like faster. In 2010, Beneteau released a whole new series called the Beneteau Sense, also aimed at luxury cruising, which is definitely their niche and where they seem to fall into the market. Beneteau, however, is known as what most people refer to as a production boat which scares a lot of people off. And it typically means a boat that's produced in large numbers for a mass market. Um, there's a popular opinion that any production boat is of lesser quality um, than those made in smaller numbers by smaller companies. And a lot of the bad press that Beneteau has floating around the internet revolves around their keels falling off, um, which sounds terrifying, but actually stems from the story of a boat called Cheeky Rafiki, a Beneteau 40.7, which in fact did lose its keel and lost the lives of all four crew members on board when that happened. But there's more to that story than just Beneteau's have their keels falling off. The boat had documented several groundings or running aground in its history and keel work and repairs were made prior to this actually all happening. In 2011, Cheeky Rafiki was only allowed as a commercially classified vessel to operate within 60 miles of a safe harbor after an inspection that it had had. Some more keel repairs were made, and there was some political back and forth as to what the vessel was allowed to do and not allowed to do. Ultimately, the vessel continued to sail, leading to its tragic losing of its keel and losing of the four lives on board. 
There are other stories of keels failing too off of production boats like Venetos, but the examples given are all race boats with high aspect custom keels and continuous abuse of racing. Production boats do tend to be built, however, to a price point. Where the -the go-around-the-world heavy ocean boats tend to be built to a point of quality, and the price is figured out later. So on the plus side, a production boat like Veneto puts more boats out there for people to buy, and if you're not racing them or abusing them or anything like that, you're probably fine and don't have anything to really worry about. Veneto boats are widely accepted to be very comfortable, respectfully fast, coastal cruisers. If, for example, you wanted to island hop throughout the entire Caribbean chain from Florida to Grenada and back, a Beneto would suit you quite well. There's a lot of pros and cons of a boat like this. The pros are they're very, very comfortable. They're very roomy. They tend to have bow thrusters to get you in and out of the slip easily. A good sail plan. They all tend to point upwind very well, um, which when you're cruising is important. Um, Fast. um, They're good for entertaining. Um, I've personally been aboard an Oceanus 45 where 12 of us were dining together very comfortably. They tend to have dinghy davits and good fridge and freezer space. Most of them have one fridge and two freezers. Wonderful. Um, They usually have good water heaters, comfortable heads with good showers. And a lot of them now, especially the Oceanus breed, have actual folding down transoms. So it's very easy to get in and out of the water if you're of limited mobility. Um, or in and out of the dinghy, especially with groceries. The cons, however, are obvious. It's a production boat. High capacity manufacturing means it's probably going to be of lower quality than, you know, a, a sort of company that made 12 of whatever model it made and they did a really good job of it. The interior, and a lot of owners complain about this about Benetos and other production boats, respectfully, um, the interior tends to be of a little bit lower quality fit and finish. Um, there's no room for a wind vane on a boat with a folding transom because the transom folds. So if you want a manual wind vane to cross oceans and things like that, um, a Beneteau is probably not the answer. Um, They might also not be ideal for ocean crossings at all. They're just not built that heavy. Though of course, many of them have crossed the ocean, made circumnavigations. Um, I just don't think that's what the boats are intended to do. They also, because Beneteau is really good at making use of every square inch inside the boat for creature comforts, they don't have room for a lot of add-ons if you plan on customizing the boat heavily, such as a massive battery bank. Um, They've already made use of all that space, so you'd be hard-pressed to find a convenient place to put anything new on that boat. The most common Benetos you'll see out sailing today are the 40 to 50 foot range of the original Benetos and some Oceanus boats in that sort of same range. The original boats, they're aging now, and they range in price of you know, up to about $80,000 for a reasonable example. If you'd like something over 60 feet, you can get that in original Beneteau for about $250,000. A good Oceanus, and again, that's the luxury version, the good Oceanus can be had for about $500,000. And the first series sort of seems to be falling somewhere in between a couple hundred thousand dollars and you can get a good 40 to 50 foot Beneteau first so you get the comfort and the speed. Problem spots for Benetos are about the same as any other aging boat. On the high aspect keel boats, you want to inspect the keel and where the keel mounts up. The problem with Cheeky Rafiki and other Benetos at the time was at the back of the high aspect keel, there's a matrix inside the bilge which supports the keel. And it it was known to delaminate and be weak and have stress fatigue and things like that. So if you have a high aspect deep, deep fin, go fast Beneteau, you want to look at the back of the keel inside the bilge and make sure there's no stress cracks or delamination or anything like that. Outside of that, same as any other boat, soft spots around the deck hardware, engine hours, the condition of the rig, um, very, very high on the list. If you like today's video, shoot me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support the channel for a couple of bucks an episode, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash ladykaysailing. I will see you guys next week.